Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here today. We're very excited to be here with you for Power Up Braille Literacy with Polly. This is actually the second APH webinar on the Polly itself. The first webinar was a great general overview. Melanie and I are here today to give you kind of the boots on the ground teacher perspective on the poly and walk you through setting up your poly for the very first time. So my name is Sherry Hart. I am a teacher of students with visual impairments. I've been working in special education for over 30 years now. I have my master's degree in varying exceptionalities, and I am currently a statewide educational specialist for the visually impaired in the sunny state of Florida. Hi everyone, excited to be here. My name is Melanie Malone. I'm a teacher of the visually impaired and orientation and mobility specialist here in Broward County, but I'm currently on leave to be at home with my son. Okay, so we're gonna start from the very beginning. You have just received your brand new poly. It comes in an amazing box. We want to highly encourage you to unpack the poly with your student for the first time. We want to start them out at a young age, receiving new equipment and learning those step-by-step -step processes for setting it up themselves. We don't want them to graduate from high school having had everything preset and suddenly they have to order something on their own and they have no idea what to do when they get that box in the mail. So as a teacher, I know if I ordered something new, especially like the Poly, it's brand new. You've never seen it before. You've never used it. You may want to unpack it, unbox it, set it up, get familiar with it first yourself. Just keep all that material. Pack it back up when you're done and go through it again with your student. Just one of those really invaluable experiences um, that they can build right from the start. The box that the Poly comes in is phenomenal. It's a really heavy duty cardboard box. It's got a magnetic opening and closing on it. It has a very nice handle on it. You can see a picture of it on the screen. I, as an itinerant teacher, would definitely keep the box and keep the poly in the box. It's got a foam insert, so it will protect that poly. Uh, you can use the handle to carry it in and out of your schools quickly and easily and keep it safe. When you first get it and you start unpacking it, there are a lot of things in the box itself. You're going to find, of course, the poly itself. There will be a saddle style stylus. There's a two-piece power adapter cord. You do need to plug the poly in to have it work. It is not, it does not have a rechargeable battery. This was a cost-saving measure. They wanted to keep the cost down. So it would be more accessible to teachers and kids. So it does need to be plugged in to work. You will also find a quick start guide, a very easy to use manual. Uh, directions are simple and easy to follow step by step. And the last piece that is in that box is a card. And this is an important card because it has a printed QR code on it. And using that card, it will let you access a digital manual, the Poly ID, an activation key, and it will get you to the Helios website. So this is one of Mel Melanie's students, Ivana, and you're going to watch a short video and see her unpa unpacking her poly for the very first time. Okay, thanks Sherry. So we have Ivana here and she's going to be unpacking her poly. Unfortunately, the audio in this video is fairly poor, so I'm going to describe what is going on in the video as it is happening. So Ivana is using both of her hands to try to find the front of the box, and I'm assisting her with that, and she is opening the top by pushing it away from her. 
<clears throat> inside the box, there's the poly, and then there's a smaller box to the right of the poly, which contains the power adapter, which she found. And she is exploring the power adapter with both hands. She is very excited. And she's explaining that she knows there are two parts to that power adapter. There's one that goes into the wall, the outlet, and the other is to be connected into the poly. So I'm just instructing her now to go ahead and collect that power adapter and place it on the table to the left of the poly box. And she is doing that now. She's going back into that smaller box and she found the stylus. <laughs> She's exploring the stylus with both hands and she is saying that it reminds her of a braille eraser. So she's going to go ahead and put that stylus to the left next to the power adapter, which is on the table. And the last thing in the box is the poly itself. She's being very careful. She's using two hands to take that poly out. She's going to put it down on the table to the left and find the lid and close that box. All right. Thank you, Ivana. Oh, great job, Ivana. She's so excited about her new poly and she can't wait to start using it. So we're going to do a very brief orientation for you on the poly. If you watched the previous webinar, they did this also, but just in case there are people in the audience today that are not familiar with it, we just want to go through this really quickly so you're familiar with it as we're talking about these features later on in the presentation. So on the very top face of the poly, on the top right, and there is a picture of this with labels on it on your screen, the top left corner of the poly has two twin braille cells. The center is where the speaker is located. And on the right hand side, there is a standard six cell refreshable braille display. Yes, the poly has a refreshable braille display for our earliest learners. So exciting. In the very center middle of the poly, there is a Perkins style keyboard. It's got the six keys to enter the dot combinations. And on the left-hand side below that, there's a round button that is the backspace button. And on the right-hand side, there is another small round button and that is the enter button. Just below the Perkins style keyboard in the center of the poly towards the bottom, there is a digital braille slate. So your student can start practicing early slate and stylus skills. And at the very bottom are the navigation keys. There are three keys, a right triangle key, a left triangle key, and a center rectangle space key. The navigation keys um, will help you scroll through the menu, select lessons, move forward in a lesson, skip past menu items, and much more. So on the left-hand side, starting at the back and moving forward, at the very back, you're going to find the spot where you plug the poly in with that adapter cord that's provided in the box. Just in front of that, there is a small round rocker switch. This is the on and off switch for your poly. And just in front of that, there is a very small rubber button. It's small but it's important. It is the repeat button. So if your student misses a direction or needs to hear something again, they can quickly just push in that button and the poly will repeat those directions for them. It is also helpful because if you push it in when the poly is asleep, like you're not sure the poly is on, if it's turned on and it's ready to go. If you just push in that button, the poly will vibrate and let you know that yes, it does have power, it is turned on and it's ready to go. The section in front of that closest to you is where the ports are. And there are three ports. There is one ethernet port and two USB ports. And there is a picture on the screen with labels to show you where those are. So on the right 
face of the poly, starting at the back and moving forward again. There are just two features. At the very back is a small audio jack. This is actually one of my favorite features. Um, I so wish the Braille Buzz had one of these. It is where you can plug headphones into the poly. So if your student is in a classroom full of other learners, they can plug in headphones and use their poly and only they will be able to hear it. Uh, the poly does have Bluetooth capabilities, but it is not able to be hooked in with wireless headphones at this time. They do need to be the uh, wired headphones plugged into the unit itself. Right in front of that is a small dial, and this is the volume control. So you can turn her up and down as needed. And the bottom of the poly has some very important information on it. There's a picture on your screen with labels. It shows you a QR code and the individual poly ID for the unit that you have. You're going to need these things when you are setting up your account for the very first time. So now that we've oriented you to the unit itself, I've mentioned a couple of times Helios. What is Helios and how is it going to help you? Well, the Poly is connected to Helios through the internet. Helios is an online platform or website that allows you to monitor your students' progress, access reports, which is going to give you that all important data that you need for IEPs and reevaluations. It's gonna let you track your students' progress over time. It's also going to let you manage content for your student so you can pick and choose exactly which lessons or games they play or work on. And finally, it will let you assign lessons and homework to individual students. So it's a very powerful platform. We want to get you started on that Helios account so you can access all of these amazing features. So it's a multi-step process, and we're going to walk you through them now. We're going to go through a lot of these processes during the presentation today. It, this presentation is being recorded, and it will be in the Hive. If it was me, I would probably be uh, going back to it and going step by step through it as I was setting up my poly so I could hit pause along the way. So it will be available for you if you wanted to do it that way as well. So the first step is going to go to the actual Helios sign in page on your computer. There is a clickable link on this PowerPoint and Amy is being fantastic and dropping that link into the chat box for you. Um, but the actual website is poly-helios.thinkerbelllabs.com. Once you are on that website, you're going to be prompted to enter in your email address. And it's going to give you one of two options. You can either sign in with an OTP or a one-time password. If you choose this option, you're going to get a verification code sent to you within your email. The second option is to sign in with a link. If you choose this option, you're also going to get an email. And in that email will be a link that you just can click on and sign in that way. So once you have linked your account to your email, this next step is going to be scanning that QR code. And remember, you have it one of two ways. You actually have a card in the box on that welcome card, or you always have it available on the bottom of the poly itself. You scan that QR code to obtain an activation key. The activation key is made up of a very long string of letters and numbers. Some of the letters are capital, some of them are lowercase you will need to enter that string of letters and numbers in when you are ready 
exactly as you see it. So step four would be going to your computer and that Helios website and entering in your activation key. You can do this in actually two different ways. If this is the first time you have been on your Helios account, you will get a pop-up box like the one shown on the screen. And it will say, warning, no polys are registered to your account. And then the bottom right of that box is a little purple button that says plus add polys. And you can click on that. If you have been into your Helios account before and just chose not to set your poly up that way from the beginning, in the dashboard, you will see a red plus poly button right on the top in the middle. You can click on that, and either way, it's going to take you to the same place. Okay, so you're almost there, just a few steps left. Once you've clicked on that to activate your poly and you've very carefully typed in your activation key and hit enter, you're going to get the words verified successfully to pop up on your screen. On that screen, you're going to see a plus add poly button. And when you click it, you're going to get a success dialog box. Just, and when you see that at the bottom of it, it will have a dismissal button. So you know that you successfully added it. You can click on that dismissal button and it will take you to the poly page. There's a screenshot of what you will see on the page. On the far left, you will see a small picture of a poly. Next to that, it will have that poly ID for the one that you just um, linked to your Helios account. It will show you when it was active. And there is actually a settings button at the far right to change the settings on the poly. You do have full access to that Helios account even on your smartphone. So you can always scan the QR code on the bottom of the poly or on that welcome card using your phone. And when you do, at the top right, you will see a sign-in button. You can click on that and you can access your Helios account on your smartphone. You would just go through the same steps to see it on your phone that you did when you were um, logging into your computer. The Helios does not have an app at this time. It may come out in the future, but right now, in order to access it on your phone, you do have to use a web browser on your phone. Okay, we've gotten you um, into Helios and you've hooked your poly up to it. We want to do just a general overview of what you're going to see. The first thing that is the most important thing really is the main menu. And it is always going to be down the left-hand side on your Helios website. And it has a number of buttons in it. The very top button is the dashboard. And this is what you will see when you first log into Helios every single time. The dashboard is going to give you a general overview of everything about your Poly and Helios account, and we'll show you that in just a few minutes. Just underneath that is the Learners tab. This will, if you click on it, it will give you a list of all of the students and the Polys that they are assigned to. This is also where you, as the teacher, can edit the student information at any time. The next button down is the Polys button. If you click on it, it will give you a list of the polys on the Helios account. It is also where the teacher can edit the settings on any of their polys. Just below the polys button is the report button. If you click on it, it will provide you with information on the usage of each of your poly. Um, devices. It's also going to be where you can get some really amazing data on your students. I love that data piece. 
Just below that is the account button. This will give you details and permissions for the Helios account itself. The second to last item in the menu is the help and support button. This will give you easy clickable links to get all of your questions answered. Or if you do need support, there is a place where you can fill out a simple form and email it into customer support. And the last item in the main menu is the Poly Quick Start Guide. So even if you are at a school, if you're at itinerant like I was, you might not have the box with you. You might not have the book with you. You always have access to it using the Helios account. Such a useful tool. I do want to mention that the Helios website is fully accessible using screen reader. Very important feature. So I did want to dive a little bit deeper into the dashboard itself. Um, the dashboard gives you a wealth of information, and this is the screen that you're going to see when you first log into your Helios account every single time. It automatically pulls up the dashboard. Um, so across the top, there are four boxes. On the far left is the learner box. It's going to tell you how many um, learners you have attached to that Helios account. To the Just to the right of that is the poly box, and that is going to tell you how many polys are associated with that Helios account. To the right of that is going to be the time that has been spent being um, that students have spent learning on the poly. And the last on the far right is going to be the average time per day that was spent on the poly. In the middle of the screen, you're gonna see two graphs. The first one on the left is the progress graph and will be in percentages. And on the right is the number of lessons completed graph. At the bottom of your screen, on the left, you're going to see um, how long, how uh, many minutes students were active on the poly. To the right of that is when the poly was last activated. Just to the right of that is going to tell you how many times the poly has been logged into. And at the far right is the party, the poly startings. How many times has it been started up and used? Look at all that amazing information just in the dashboard alone. So now that we've kind of oriented you to the Helios account, we do want to go through some of the features and some of the things you can do within that account itself. So one of the first things you're probably want, going to want to do is name your poly. This is going to be especially helpful if you have more than one. I would never remember that string of letters and numbers and which one it was associated with. So I would definitely be giving each one of my polys a nickname. So I would be able to tell them apart. In order to do this, you go to that main menu, you click on the polys button, and you will get a simple form that pops up on the right hand side of your screen. There is a screenshot of this on your screen right now. There is a little text box just below the picture of the poly where you will enter whatever name you would like to call your poly so you can identify it. And then you're going to click the update button to the right. It's just that simple. Once you have nicknamed your poly so you can tell them apart, the next important thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to add your learners your students to the account. In order to do this, you're gonna to go to that main menu and you can, um, in the dashboard at the very beginning, it's going to prompt you to do that. There is going to be a button on the left-hand side of the dashboard that has a little picture of a person in red and a plus, and then underneath that, it says add. There's a screenshot on the screen for you to see. You're going to click on that to add your students. Once you click on that button, 
you're going to get a simple form that pops up and you can fill out the form. The first thing it's going to ask for is a nickname for your student. Please don't use any real names or identifiable information, such as an email address in this field, because that information is shared with the Thinkerbell and Helios developers. The second thing you can do, and I love this feature, is you can actually record yourself saying your student's name. If you do this, every time the poly is turned on for that student, it will say their name in your voice, in a human voice, so it's easily recognizable for them. If you choose not to record the vo your voice saying their name, that's fine. You don't have to. If you don't, then the computer will just, it will be a computer generated voice that says their name when you turn it on. The next thing it's going to ask you about is what type of learner it is. And you have two options of, lear of learners here. It's either you can choose from regular learner or teacher advanced learner. If you choose regular learner, your student will see a preset order of activities that require them to complete them in that specific order, beginning with the introduction to poly content. So they can only go through it in that sequential order. This is great for anybody that's just starting out with Braille um, and they're uh, learning it step by step. This might be the way for you to go, regular learner. If, however, you do have a student that has been learning Braille for a while now, um, they might not need all of those introductory introduction lessons, you can choose the teacher advanced learner option. This option allows the Braille learner to navigate freely throughout the content on the poly. The fourth thing that you're going to need to fill out on the form is you're going to need to choose the default poly. Which poly is this student going to be using? If you just have one, it's an easy choice. But if you have more than one, you do want to make sure that you assign the student to the correct poly. And the last thing is a consent box, allowing that information to go into your Helios account. Once you have done that and entered it, your learner, your learner or student will be added to the account. I did want to let you know that you can use your poly with multiple students and you can add more than one learner on your Helios account. However, you will need to assign each learner to the poly individually through the Helios account prior to the student working on it. So like I said, when they turn on the poly, it's going to say their name. If you have more than one student using the same poly, for example, if you have Susie and Sammy and Susie was using the poly, her lessons would be built into it. And when she turned it on, it would call, it would say, hello, Susie, and it would have her lessons. If you then give the poly to Sammy, you need to go into the Helios account and switch the learner on that poly to Sammy. So Sammy hears his name and has access to the lessons that he is learning. Okay, so how does all of this magic work? Your Polly is connected to the Helios account through the internet. You do not need to be on the same Wi-Fi or even in the same location in order to monitor your students' progress or assign lessons. So if you're student has the poly at home or in their school and you are at another school or a different location, you can still monitor their progress using that Helios account. The poly does work when it is not connected to the internet. However, if a student account is not created or the student is using the poly as a standalone device, the progress will not be saved and they will not be prompted to begin where they left off. They'll just have to start at the beginning. 
The nice thing about it is though, the poly does store that information. And the next time it is synced to the internet, the data will sync to the Helios account. So you will still get that information. It just won't happen in real time. So this is really nice if they're at school, you know how it goes, the internet goes out, they can still use their poly. If you send it home for homework and they don't have access to internet at home, they can still use their poly. How do you connect your poly to the internet? There are actually two ways to do this. You can do it using the web browser, or you can do it directly on the poly itself. So we're going to walk you through those steps next. Hope you're hanging in there with me and you're learning a lot. We're gonna start with connecting directly on the poly itself. I did find this method a little bit easier um, and it is a little bit shorter. So we're gonna start with this method today. So it, the first thing you're gonna do is turn on your poly. When you turn her on, you're going to hear her click and clack and she will start talking to you. Polly does like to talk. She will walk you through a lot of the steps. She will give you a lot of directions along the way. She's very helpful. She's also very verbose. So once you turn on the Polly, you're going to um, find on her the navigation keys at the bottom, those three special keys, and there's a picture of them on your screen. The right triangle, the space bar, and the left triangle keys, you're going to press them at the same time, and that's going to take you to the main menu. Then you're going to use the right triangle key to toggle through that main menu until you hear her say settings. And you're going to press the space bar, that rectangle key in the middle, to select it. Next, your poly is going to say network settings. You're going to use that right triangle key until you hear her say, configure Wi-Fi on Polly. This is what we want to do. So we're going to press the space bar to select that option. She's going to start listing off all of the available networks that she finds. You can use the right triangle key to work your way through that list until you find the Wi-Fi network that you're looking for. Once you find it, you press the space bar to select it. After you've selected the um, Wi-Fi network that you want, on the poly itself, you're going to use that Perkins keyboard to enter in the password. So you're going to enter it in Braille. You're going to need to remember if there are capitals to use the dot six capital sign. If there are numbers, you're going to need to use the number indicator. Uh, the poly does work off of UEB Braille. So if you are doing numbers, they are UEB and they are in the top part of the cell. Once you have entered in the correct password, press the space bar to submit. And the poly will let you know that she is connected to the internet. Okay. The second way you connect you can connect your poly to the internet is by using a web browser. And you will need to do this method if your username of your internet or your password has any spaces in it. So I was able to connect my poly at the school that I work at through the poly itself. But when I brought the poly home with me, I was not able to connect it through the poly because my home internet does have a space in it. So I connected it through the web browser. So it starts off very similarly when you're connecting with the web browser. You're gonna turn on your poly. You're gonna press those three navigation keys, the right triangle, the space bar, and the left triangle key all at the same time to get to the main menu. There is a picture of those keys on the PowerPoint right now. After you're in the main menu, you're going to use that right triangle key to toggle through the menu until you hear her say settings. 
you're going to press the space bar to, to select settings. It's going to take you to network settings, and you're going to toggle again through to the right using that right triangle key until you hear her say, modify Wi-Fi settings using a web browser. When you select that option, Polly will say, Polly hotspot Wi-Fi is now available. So your Polly device is so amazing that it actually has a Wi-Fi hotspot built into it and you have just turned it on. So you are done on the Poly device for now. You've turned on the Poly hotspot. You're now going to switch over to your computer or your cell phone. The next step is going to be um, opening settings on your computer or on your phone and picking that Poly hotspot Wi-Fi network in your network settings. And I did give you a screenshot of what that looks like on my computer. I did pick Poly hotspot and clicked on the connect button so that my computer was now connected directly to the Poly itself. Once it was connected to the Poly hotspot, then you open up a web browser. Whatever web browser you choose is fine. Chrome, Google, Firefox, your choice. You have one of two websites that you can go to. Always nice to have options. The first one is poly-wifi.net. The second one is 10.0.0.2. You're going to type one of those two into the UR field at the top of your browser and enter it in order to open up that website. Personally, I found that the 10.0.0.2, one, that one worked a little bit better for me, uh, but it's always nice to have options and I'm glad that they provided two. So once you have typed that in and hit enter, it's going to take you to dun, 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 the Poly Wi-Fi configuration portal. And there is a screenshot of this on the PowerPoint. So you can see exactly what it looks like. So this is not actually in the Helios account itself. This is a special portal to get you hooked up onto the internet with your Poly. So once that has come up on your screen. In the top middle of your screen, you're gonna see configure networks. And on the right-hand side is a blue add new button. You're gonna click on that add new button. And when you do, a list of available networks is going to be displayed. You're going to find the network that you want to connect to, your home network or the school network. Once you click on that to choose it, it's going to ask you to type in a passphrase. This is the password for that internet um, account. Once you have correctly typed in that password, if you have one, there's a save button. You're going to save it. And it will automatically on your screen prompt you to restart your poly. So you're going to click that restart button and you're going to hear your Polly um, turn off and then she's going to start clicking and clacking and talking to you again. And she's going to let you know that congratulations, you are successfully connected to the internet. So we've done a lot so far. We've named your Polly. We've set up the account. We've got you hooked to the internet. There are so many more things you can do in this Helios account with and for your student. So Melanie is going to take over now, and she's going to show you all of those options. Thanks, Sherry. Okay, so now that you are connected to the internet, I'm going to walk you through how to share access to your student's Helios account. So why can this be useful? This can be useful, let's say, to your student's classroom teacher. If you, as the TVI, 
want to go ahead and assign that student a lesson through the Helios account that shows up on their poly, and you want them to complete this assignment while they're in class, maybe during independent work time or at a center, the person who you share access with can go into that Helios account and check to see what the student has completed. It is an excellent tool for that person, that classroom teacher that maybe needs to take the data or write a daily report. It allows them all of that information right at their fingertips in the Helios account. So the first thing we're going to do is start at the main menu. When you log into Helios, the main menu will always look the same, and it's going to be located on the left-hand side. So to share access, we're going to start by selecting account. Once you select account, it's going to bring you to the accounts permission page. And on the bottom right, next to linked accounts, is the word manage. And we want to go ahead and select manage. Once you select manage, it's going to bring you to the linked accounts. You want to go ahead and select that plus invite button, which will bring you to the general information page. The general information consists of the person's name that you want to share access with. So for example, um, I have a screenshot here. I put in the, the classroom teacher. Her name is Judy Smith, and I labeled her classroom teacher and her email address. Below that basic information is going to be the level of access you want to give. Once you completed this, you will go ahead and select invite. Once you do so, that person will receive an email with all of the information they need in order to access that Helios account. If you wish to change their access, you can do so. There is an edit button and you select that edit button and it's gonna give you those options again for access and you can make those changes. For the access options, we have report, which gives them a report of usage, analyze, a more detailed report of usage, remember that data, it's right there. Curate, where they can customize content and assign lessons. Settings for the learner and poly editing. And at the very bottom, we have restricted access. So if you make any of those changes, be sure to select update so that they are saved. Okay, moving on to the poly lessons that are already built into this Helios account. So they are, there are four different sections for the poly lessons. We have the introduction to your poly and braille. The second one is teacher chosen words. We have English Braille grade one. This consists of 238 lessons and it's separated into two different areas. The two different areas both consist of 119 lessons. The lessons are reading and typing and reading and writing. And the last section for the lessons we have English Braille grade two, which has 1,270 lessons. And this is broken up into four different areas. We have the introduction to contracted Braille, English grade one proficiency test, and reading and writing, reading and typing, 634 lessons, and reading and writing also has 634 lessons. Now, for the lessons, you can do a few different things. You can simply follow the guided lessons that are already preset on the Poly, which is a great option, especially if you have a brand new Braille user. If you choose to do so, follow those preset lessons, they must complete all of these lessons before moving on to grade two. The other option is you as the teacher, you can go into that Helios account, if you have a student who already knows contra uh, uncontracted Braille, you want them to skip right to grade two. You can go into the Helios account and you can assign those lessons. So if you already have your poly and you've set up your Helios account and have, have exported a little bit, you may notice that under settings, there is an option to change your student from grade one to grade two. However, 
it is grayed out at this time. When I spoke to customer service, they said that it's not currently active, but maybe in the near future it will be. So let's take a closer look at grade one lessons and how these are broken down on the Helios account. So for grade one, uncontracted Braille, again, we have 238 lessons and they are broken down into two different areas, both containing 119 lessons. You have reading and typing and reading and writing. And you can see on the right side of the screen, there is a screenshot of how this looks on the Helios account. Each of these sections are expanded into their own lessons and you can assign them individually. For example, we have English Alphabet Part 1, which contains the lessons for letters A through J, and these are 45 lessons. All the way to the right, you can see the word expand, and when you select that, it is broken down individually, and you can select them one at a time and assign them. So same thing for grade two. We have 1,270 lessons, and they are broken down into two different sections. But before you get to those two different sections, you have two pre-lessons, which are the introduction to contracted Braille, and then a proficiency test for grade one, which will also give you great information, great data. The two areas that it's broken down into each have 634 lessons that can be expanded and assigned individually. So here we have Payson and she is going to start on the alphabet, alphabetic word sign lesson and you may hear her TVI Ben in the background. And what alphabetic word signs and strong contractions are. Let's review. Alphabetic word signs are special letters that represent an entire word. For example, but is an alphabetic word sign that is represented by the letter B. Okay, so just gives you a little example of what the poly sounds like. Okay, we're going to move on to adding teacher chosen words. So we're going to start at the main menu, again, on the Helios account. On the left-hand side, we have learners. That's the first thing you are going to select is learners. Then it'll bring you to the learners page and give you a list of the learners that you have on your account. So for my account, my learner, the name is Broward. Once you select Broward, it's going to bring you to a different menu specific for that student. The main menu, that main, main menu consists of overview, usage, progress, performance, vocabulary, homework, customization, and settings. So you're going to go ahead and select customization. And then on the bottom right, you're going to select customize. And this is where you are going to add the information for those teacher chosen words. The first, the next thing you're going to do is select plus add new to add a new word. And it's going to bring you to a page to add that information. So teacher chosen words are a set of vocabulary words, and you can add one, you can add two, add three, as many as you like, you just repeat the process. So the information that you would need for each teacher chosen word is the word, the definition, the sentence usage, and the part of speech. Now, once you completed this information, then you will select add customization, which is in the top middle of that page. Once you have added your teacher chosen words, they will appear under that section. And they will show you here what I have added. I've added the word heard, calm, and past. And it gives you the audio of what it's going to sound like on that student's poly. And you have the option to remove those words as well. 
Okay, so we have Ivana here. And again, unfortunately, the audio is poor for this video, but we felt that the content is still very useful. So I'm going to go ahead and explain what is happening in this video as it is being played. So Ivana has already went through the menu and she has selected teacher chosen words again, because I went into the Helios account and I assigned these words to her. So she has selected teacher chosen words. The first word has come up on the refreshable Braille display, which is in the top right. And she is going to go ahead and read that word. And she is spelling it out loud as she's reading it. The Polly is telling her what the word is. It's telling her that isn't it is an adjective. The definition is feeling at peace, not nervous. And it is using that word in a sentence. Ivana is calm when taking a test. So the Polly is now asking her if she wants to go ahead and learn how to type that word. And she selected that option. So she's going to go ahead and enter the letters. She's entering the letter C, then the letter A, and she is checking her spelling as she is typing again on that refreshable Braille display that's in the top right corner. She wrote the letter L. And then the last letter she's typing is M. And the Polly is telling her that if she wants to submit her, um, her entry, she can go ahead and hit the space bar. And she did so. And it gives a little ding so that she knows that she got it correct. Okay, so we're going to move on to the Polly games. And there are 12 Polly games that are already set in the Helios account. And those games are Whack a Braille, Game of Dots, Whack a Key, Game of Keys, English Braille Typing Letter Race, Writing Letter Race Using the Slate, Balloon Pop, Game of Words, Exploring English Braille Grade One, Explore Phonics, Explore Dots, Explore Keys, Explore Braille Writing Slate, Vocabulary Builder, and the last one is Translate Grade 1 Braille into Grade 2 Braille. Now, the games are for individual use. They cannot be played with another student, maybe at a different school, with another poly. So you will have to get creative. If you have two students in one school, or you're at a school for the blind, you can have those students together. They can compete and play those games on that poly. So now we have Payson and she is playing a game, Whack a Key, Game of Keys. So please try not to focus on Payson's seating position. We know that she is seated a little bit lower than the table. We want you to focus on how much she is enjoying her poly. Keys correctly as possible. You got this. So I'm so proud of you. Are, the higher you score. Press space bar to start the game. Ready, steady, go. <laughs> Key one. Key three. Key six. Okay, thank you, Payson. So great to see those kiddos using that device. Okay, so now we're going to move on to assigning homework. So I've talked a lot about assigning those lessons and them showing up on the poly. So I want to walk you through how exactly to do that. So again, we are back on the Helios account at that main menu on the left hand side, and we are going to start by selecting learners. Then it'll bring you to the learners page, I'm going to select Broward because that's my learner name. And then I'm going to select homework. Once you do so, it's going to show you a list of those lessons. 
So let's take a closer look at the different lessons. So you can assign these lessons in order or begin with grade one or grade two. It's up to you as a TVI to decide that. There are over a thousand lessons and I don't want you to get overwhelmed. I know it's a big number, but Polly has done a wonderful job on the Helio site, breaking down each section into smaller lessons, allowing your student to be successful. There are three precursor lessons. You have the introduction to your Polly and Braille, Wacka Braille, which is the game of dots, and Wacka Key, game of keys. Then you have English Braille Grade 1, which is 238 lessons, English Braille Grade 2, 1,270 lessons, Teacher Chosen Words, where you can add those vocabulary words that you customize for your student, and then the 12 games. So let's go ahead and take a look at my Helios account so I can show you exactly how to assign those lessons. So this is as if I have just logged into my account and we have the main menu on the left-hand side. I'm going to select learners, then the learner name, which is Broward. And then I get this menu at the top. I'm going to select homework because that's what I want to assign. And here is where you have all of the options for the lessons. So let's say you have a brand new Braille user and you only want them to start with the introduction to your poly and Braille. So next to each lesson, you have this little box here and it is you go ahead and select it if that's the lesson that you want. And once you do so on that same screen, but on the right hand side, it's going to show you what you have selected. So I selected the introduction to your poly and Braille and it's telling me that I only have one lesson selected. That's all you wanna assign, that is totally fine. You're gonna go ahead and hit save homework and you get this little pop-up and it says success with a check mark. I'm gonna go ahead and select dismiss. And let's say you change your mind, you're like, oh, I wanna add a game too. You can go ahead and select that game of your choice and it'll appear on the right-hand side where it says selected for homework. And now it shows that I have two lessons selected. And to save those changes, we wanna hit save homework. Again, you get that success pop-up and it's as easy as that. Okay. So now that you have assigned those lessons, we want to be able to view that student progress and viewing reports to get that very important data that's already populated for you on the website. We are back at the Helios account. I know you're seeing a pattern here. We're going to start at that main menu by selecting learners. Then my learner name is Broward. And at the top of that menu, I'm going to select progress. So once you select progress, you are going to get a list of those lessons. So whichever one that you want to view the progress of, that's what you will select. So I have chosen the teacher chosen words and you will notice that to the right of teacher chosen words is a little check mark. And that is telling me that that student has completed that assignment. When you select that lesson, the information will appear on the right. It shows me that the progress is complete. It gives me a description. It even tells me the skills that were embedded in that lesson, which are reading and typing, which we saw Ivana was using that refreshable braille display to read that word. And then she was inputting the word using the Perkins keyboard. The words that were learned were three, because I assigned her three and she completed them. The time spent was five minutes. She attempted this one time. And it gives me even more detailed information as far as the date and the specific time that she worked on this lesson. So again, if you see those lessons with a check mark, that means that that student has completed them. If they are highlighted in yellow, that means they have been attempted. Okay, we're gonna move on 
to student performance. So in order to get to student performance, you're going to start at that main menu, select learners, then the learner name, and simply select performance. I know Sherry's gonna love this slide because we have all that data. You so do once know you how much I love data. <laughs> So once you get to that student performance page, it gives you two options in a drop down menu. You have letters and you have words. Once you select the option that you want, it's going to show you speed and accuracy for that category. So again, this is absolutely amazing. The student does their work on the poly. You go into that Helio account and the information and the data is already populated for you. So this is an amazing tool for you to use for your progress reports, for your IEP meetings, whatever information you need. So I'm going to pass it back over to Sherry. Hello, I am back. Um, we are going to watch Payson and her TBI Ben one more time. And he's going to be asking her how she feels about her poly and what she thinks about learning on it. So let's listen to Payson. Tell me what you've learned from Polly so far. Polly, we had fun on the and strong contraction and um, uh, What was fun about it? That, that I actually knew what to say, like, I said it with her, I was like, and. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like um, anything about the Braille cells up top? Yes. What did you like about them? Tell me. Because you had to check if it was and or not. Okay. And I was like, this is and, this is and, this is not and, this is and, this is and, this is and. <laughs> would you rather use the poly to learn contractions and do some of your reading work on, or would you rather me braille it on the Perkins for you and you read it that way? Do the poly. Why the poly? Because it's my favorite. Why is it your favorite? Because of all the fun thing it does. Does it have more fun games than what I can put on the Perkins? <laughs> Just brailing it on paper? <laughs> no. <laughs> you can feel it on the standard braille. Just like the chameleon. Oh, okay, yes. Does the poly have more games and stuff? Oh, yeah. She seems like a lot of fun. I like the Whack-A-Cell, Whack-A-Braille. Uh, whack what else do you like about it? I like the English Braille uh, grade one. I mean, two. Okay. Grade one, have you mastered that one? I think you know your grade one, don't you? That's uncontracted Braille. Yeah. yeah. I know uncontracted Braille, and I also know... Contracted Braille. You do know contracted Braille. What is your favorite contracted Braille? What is your favorite word? Time. Time? How do you Braille time? Got five and a T. Do you know what my favorite one is? What? The word four. Do you know why the word four? Because what? Because it's a full cell. It's easy to do. Wow! <laughs> I'm so excited because, like... I'm really coming to your way because I want to be with you. <laughs> so, so cute to see that interaction. <laughs> that was amazing. And to hear her talk about Polly and how much she enjoys it. Thank you again to Paul, to Payson and Ben. Okay. You've hung on with, there with us so far. We've given you a lot of information. We have just a little bit more. Um, it's all, these are like tips and tricks now and important information you need in order to uh, expand the life of your poly because we want her with you for a long time. Um, one of the very first things you need to know is that the poly is very temperature sensitive. So you do not want to store your poly in any temperatures that are below 50 degrees Fahrenheit or above 104 degrees. So definitely no cars, buses outside in Florida where Melanie and I live in the summer, you know our cars are getting up above 120 degrees 
or up north in the winter, for those of you crazy enough to live up north where it gets cold, if it gets below 50, she's not going to like it. So make sure you don't leave it in your car or in your trunk. Bring it inside with you. You also want to make sure that you do not store it near any high heat sources. This means nowhere near an oven, a radiator, a furnace, anywhere like that. You also want to make sure that you don't put any heavy objects on top of your poly. You don't want to crush her and hurt her little parts. Some other general tips and tricks. Polly is magnetic. She has magnets inside of her, so she will attract metal. So you want to make sure that you do not store any sharp metal objects near her because she will bring them to her and your student might get injured when they go to use it. Um, so no tax or anything like that. You want to make sure that your hands are dry when you're using her, just like a keyboard or anything like that. She is electronic. She doesn't like liquids. The next one is especially important for me to avoid liquids when you are using her. Um, I do have a tendency to spill things, so I'm going to take particular note of that one. You want to make sure that when you are using your poly, she has to be plugged in. You want to use the power cord that comes with the poly. If you use another power cord or source, it may damage the poly unit, and that would actually avoid the warranty. We definitely don't want you to do that. Prevent dropping. She is pretty sturdy, um, but once again, it's an electronic piece of equipment. You want her to last. I know nobody drops things on purpose, but do what you can to avoid that. You want to be careful not to put too much or additional pressure on that refreshable braille display. You just want that light touch when reading it, because if it is, if you put something heavy on top of it, those are just pins that come up and down so the students can read the braille. Um, if they're not working correctly, they'll get the wrong output. They won't be able to read the words and know what it says. So just be a little cautious of the refreshable braille display. And the other suggestion that we have for you is if you do have polys in your district um, or if you have, if you're at a school for the blind and you have multiple polys, we suggest that you possibly put them on one Helios account and give access to your teachers, just as Melanie showed you. It makes it easier to transfer polys and accounts between people if they are on that one account. You know how students love to move. Um, so things happen and teachers get reassigned. It just will be a little bit easier for you to transfer that information. If you find that you need to reset your poly for any reason, or if you need to remove it from your poly, from your Helios account, maybe at the end of the year, or if you are passing that poly to another teacher or another learner, two very quick and easy ways to do this. Once again, through the Helios account, you're gonna pull up that account. You're gonna look in the main menu for the polys page. You're going to click on the poly that you want to reset. And at the bottom right, there will be a reset button. Push on that and the poly will be reset. If you need to remove the poly from an account, very similar, you're gonna go in your Helio suite to that polys page, select the poly you want to take off of the account. And this time, instead of at the bottom right, you're gonna look on the top right and there is going to be a remove button. Push that button and that poly has now been taken off of the Helios account. Very easy to do. We do have a couple of resources for you. I know when um, I go to trainings, I love things that I can walk away with and use right away. So we wanted to provide you some of those here today. There is a clickable link for the roadmap or menu map outline for all of those lessons on the poly. So 
I would definitely, as a teacher, print that out and keep it with me. So when I was doing any lesson planning, they have all of those expandable menus within the Helio suite itself, but I am still kind of a paper pencil person. Uh, I would like to have the printed map for me so I could quickly look through it and review it when I was assigning things or lesson planning for my student. In the center, there is also a link to the quick start guide. So you now have it three ways. You have the actual book that you get in the box. You have access to it through the Helios website, or you can access it through our PowerPoint, which will be available on the APA Chive. And the last thing on the right is a clickable link that is going to take you to kind of a tips and tricks page. And this is something that Melanie and I created because the poly itself does have um, some, uh, oh, I was doing so well. Um, it does have some uh, key commands that until you're familiar with them, you might want to just reference quickly. So this is just a half sheet that you can print out and is gonna give you those basic key commands, such as if you press the right triangle key, it will let you skip the instructions that she's giving. If your student has already heard them a few times, they may not want to listen to them again. They can hit that right triangle key to skip those instructions. We want to give a special thanks to Payson and Ben, her TVI, for allowing us to use the videos today. It's invaluable to actually see the kids using the product. Melanie and her student, Ivana, she did an amazing job. Thank them so much for allowing us to use their footage. And we do want to say thank you for being here with us today and hanging in there. I know it has been a journey. On this last slide, you're going to find our contact information. It has my email address and Melanie's email address. If you have questions for us, we are happy to answer them. Please know that we are not tech support, though. General not, questions. <laughs> yeah, general user <laughs> questions we can probably answer. Tech support, you are going to need to contact APH directly. They have a 1-800 toll-free number. They also have an email address, cs at aph.org, that you can email your questions or um need support to. They are open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, such long hours. We hope that you enjoyed the presentation today. The Poly is a wonderful tool to add to your student's toolbox. It can help round out your Braille instruction and give your students some independent practice when you are not there. If only we could be there at all times, right? I know. That would be so nice. <laughs> it could also Thank you, be everyone. used. Yeah. It can also be used as a center in a general education classroom or allow your student to practice their newest Braille skills at home. The Poly is definitely a fun new way you can supplement your Braille reading instruction.